just arrived at Castigan, unloaded. Beautiful spot. Thank you. And there he goes. Eight days alone in the wilderness. Can we survive? I don't think. Okay, it's uh, Tuesday, June 17th. We're at Kistigan Lake Outpost. Brendan is laughing at me. I don't know why. Uh, Kistigan Lake Outpost, op operated by Elk Island Lodge. We had a late start this morning, didn't we? Yeah. I mean, I don't even know what it is, 11 uh, a.m. in the morning. We had some issues with the motors. Uh, it's all straightened out. We got it all figured out. We um, have... 60 degree water temperature on the graph. We're on uh, the main body of Castigan on the North Shore. Uh, so typically this time of the year we look for uh, bays with southern, a southern exposure because they're going to be a little bit warmer and uh, we're just about, if you just turn the camera around Brent, we're about to head into this bay. There's a creek filtering into the back end there and we suspect there's pike there. So. This time of the year with 60 degree or better water temperatures, you typically don't have to finesse them. So I have kind of a walleye patterned, I think I still have the price tag on this one. Nope. <laughs> walleye patterned spinnerbait. Brendan has a Johnson Silver Minnow. But it all works. We'll probably switch around. We're using doctor spoons and uh, all kinds of different stuff. No finessing, I don't think, on this trip. We're, it's time to catch some fish. Let's go. I think there literally has to be thousands, thousands of pike in this bay. The unfortunate part is the vast majority of them are kind of, kind of small. But we we did raise one that was like definitely in excess of 40 about 15 minutes ago. I turned the camera on because Brendan was like, you know, I'm not sure about this one, Dad. It's. I'm not sure if I can count this one. No. It's kind of a nice chunky mid-sizer yeah. on, a, on a small doctor spoon, on a small pink and white doctor spoon. I got it. Not terrible, but... Yeah. What's wrong with that? Yeah. And a little pink and white doctor. All right. Still working these North Shore Bays, so southern exposure. It's all sand on the bottom. I mean, it just... Yeah. Well, it nice soaks one. up the heat like a sponge and right here there's a creek coming in behind us and there's a reed point there's a reed point that extends way 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 out into the lake we just started working it we're going to work our way up and use the wind and drift and fish both sides of it and right away yeah that's that a pretty good nice one on the doctor spoon the orange and copper doctor Big one. Yeah, it's a pretty nice one. Oh. I think uh, I think I should be able to grab this. Let me see how well hooked it is. It looks way bigger in the water. Yeah. No, it's a pretty nice one. Yeah. No, it's wrapped up. We don't like it when you do that. That's probably 37. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll put a tape on it. It's a pretty girthy one. Want me to grab a rod now? Mm, nope. Be good. Oh, we are getting a first attempt. It never happens. Except this time. Except this time. Oh. Right in the corner of the mouth. Decent fish. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, he ate that big time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I literally just picked up my rod. And, uh, first cast I got, I think it's a walleye. I absolutely love, 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 love this Legend X rod. It's so sensitive. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a nice fat walleye. Oh, <laughs> that's a beauty. That, that is a uh, raggedy fins, like holy moly. Big fat ones in this lake. Big, None of them are small. One. Like that old fish just t-boned that jig. 
Barely hooked. Oh, he's hooked good. Huh? That's a pretty good walleye. Yeah. Here, a little uh, unhook it and see if I can do that again. Yeah. Long, skinny, but kind of raggedy looking guy. That was fun. Bright chartreuse and like lime green. Bren's got one now, right That's off the wall. point. This is a giant, by the way. Oh, ho, ho, ho. they're all really nice size. Really, really nice, big fat walleye. walleye oh yeah, for sure it's a walleye. You're kind of high stick of that rod there, bud. Let's have a look at that fish. Oh yeah, another nice fat one just engulfed your paddle tail. Apparently there's no small walleyes on Costigan Lake. Definitely going to need the pliers for that guy. Here, swing him over here. I got the players right here. That's a beaut. Another nice one. Like oh, he shut his mouth like... <laughs> yeah. Here, come on over. Let's, let's have a look. Open your yap. I can't really do much because I'm... There we go. Big hammer. Very nice. Yeah. Beauty. Another pretty decent one. Same point, same paddle tail. It's, yeah, it's got some weight to it, man. Yeah, I think all of them do. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It's another sow. I mean, for a far north lake. Anyway. Oh, my gosh. They eat those jigs. That's probably like a. That's a beauty. High twenties almost. Incredible. Yeah. Wow. It's probably a twenty-six and a half. I Something like that. Yeah, that's a nice one. Just engulfed it. All right. Cool. Okay. Man, was that exciting? Third drift down through here. We raised a couple of big fish, and Brendan just flipped out. He's like, "Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh!" Ho, ho. And that fish, we both saw it. It come up behind his lure and just slammed it. It's engulfed. That was amazing, buddy. Way to go. That was awesome. I think we're going to cradle that one. That's a nice one. Nice fat one. Oh, I missed that jump. Okay, you're going to have to come back here. Yeah, and you're probably going to have to swing it around to the other side of the boat yep. just because of the way the wind is going here. That's a nice one. Completely engulfed, yeah. I'm trying to get it untangled. Yeah. Oh! Ho, ho, ho. Now it's just getting something more wrapped. Okay, I'm not even sure what you switched to. Is it the doctor spoon still? Yep, no. The little pink and white doctor. Wicked. Oh, that's not good. That's all wrapped. I that's know, the problem. I know. I know. I know. That's, that's crazy. Oh. Okay, that's. This is not the way to land a fish. But we got it anyway. Good job. Good job, bud. All right. We'll uh, we'll get some pictures on it's our second time. full day. It's our third day in camp, but our second full day. Beautiful morning. Brendan just grabbed his rod, and uh, 
right off the dock. Little, there's a little pike, eh, buddy? Yeah. Yeah. That little pink and white doctor spoon was uh, his favorite lure yesterday. Right off the dock. What a beautiful, beautiful morning it is. Okay, this is our second full day. Tuesday, June 18th. Another gorgeous, gorgeous day. And uh, we made a run back up to uh, the bay where we did so well yesterday at the end of the day where um, we got a couple of giants. And this is a not, not a 40, but Bren, how many have we seen so far? Oh, Big ones. Four or five. At least four or five. And just uh, when Brennan first hooked this one, I had like a legit 42, 43 follow my uh, my weedless spoon and right to the boat. There's. You know what, this actually is quite it's, a it's an okay one, yeah. We're seeing more big fish this morning than we did last night. The wind shifted, so this morning it's from the north. Yesterday it was from the south. Completely different drift. It was f first, when we first entered the bay, it was actually dead calm. And I was wondering, you know, usually a little bit of wind helps. And, um, man, there's way more big fish in here than I thought. Brendan's using still the, uh, the pink and white doctor spoon, the small one. He's never going to take it off, I think, for <laughs> the rest of the trip. Not. He's working it through these weeds. I don't know how he's doing it. Completely engulfed. Yeah. Like, I mean... Completely, totally engulfed. Oh, it's not a bad one. It's a nice fat one. Yeah. Right on. Should you put the measure on that one? Yeah, it's not 40, but it's a nice one. Beauty. Yeah. Ren's got another one. On that darn doctor spoon again. Yeah. That's a nice one. I just raised, again, I keep raising them. I raised one on that, uh, I got a pink and white spinnerbait there because Brenna's using the pink and white doctor so I switched to that just a little spinnerbait and uh, it's been pretty lethal they're definitely chasing hardware they like the flash that's just not that big, but it's a well no that's a very decent one we've got 65 degree water temperature in here right now today so they're they're chasing stuff Great big head on that guy. Careful. Oh my god. You can probably get that out right there. I got it. That's a nice oh, one, yeah. bud. That's a nice one. That's a beaut. Way to go. Oh yep. my gosh. Oh, that was just the coolest thing ever. I got this uh, Fire Tiger Cyclops spoon on. We're I out. saw that thing. We saw it. It's the it, biggest for sure. It was. It Don't was get so it in the cool. motor. Oh, he's right under the motor. It just. We're in a big flat. I mean, they go for it when and, they're just uh, in the water. We're not like in a well-defined bay or anything like that. And uh, oh there, was, there was quite a bit of cabbage here. It's it's just like a big four to five foot flat. Like okay, there's cabbage here. I made one cast. So it's, it's okay right now, bud. All right. I made one cast and I got a small hammer handle. And we're just drifting along. It's kind of hard to see in here because it's dark bottom. And uh, we drifted right over top of this fish. I'm like, there's a huge fish right there. That's happened like three I know, times. but this time it actually hit. I just flipped my spoon out, and then I, I, it was right up to my rod tip, and then I was just, I wasn't even reeling. I was just uh, doing almost like a little mini figure eight beside the boat, and he just engulfed it. Man, that was so cool. I need to step on some stable ground here. Yeah. No, that's a pretty nice one. Yeah, we might cradle that one. <laughs> yeah, we will. So when we get it close, we'll switch. Hopefully, he's well hooked. <laughs> that was so epic. You saw it hit too, eh? Yeah, I did. Okay, so when we get her close, I'll I'll take the camera and then we'll see if we can do this. Yep. On the Meps Cyclops spoon, something I rarely use. I don't quite know why I put that on, but anyway. <laughs> okay. Just, uh, I, I, 
just get it ready. I'm going to lead it right in right now. Maybe not. <laughs> Right under, 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 under. We got it. Hey, hey, all right. Keep her closed, bud. That's a beastly pike. Right on. Woo, you're too far away, but I'd high five you. Fist pump from long range. Brendan's up to bat again. Is that on, is that on the daredevil again, bud? Yeah. Yeah. It's so uh, hot. Midday here. It's like fishing in the Gobi Desert, and we were both kind of just sitting down, and uh, normally we're standing up when we're, uh, we're pretty focused, but anyway, uh, this pretty nice fish. It's another thick, mid-sized fish. Just smashed his spoon. Big head on that guy. Holy cow. I don't think that one's getting off. It looks really well hooked. Man, there's a, a lot of fish in here, and I think, you know, probably, and there's walleye, actually, I haven't mentioned that, interspersed with these pike, we're catching good numbers of incidental walleye, there's hammering our, oh, man, they're hammering our pike spoons, it's a great spot, and right now, on the graph, we've got 68 Fahrenheit, Yesterday on the main lake we had 60, so it's like eight degrees warmer in here. That's probably why. Well, yeah, and uh, ice is ice was out around the 23rd, 24th of May, so we're about three weeks after ice out. It's really quite amazing how quickly the water warms up, very very quickly. But we were. We're just sitting here in the boat, and it's fairly windless in here, and stifling almost, and discussing the possibility of the stripping down and hopping in for a quick swim. It's so darn hot. Dangerous position. Why don't you swing it around over to over to me, and uh, come over here, and if you can't get it, I'll get it. The camera, the video is probably not that good, but the blue and silver and purple daredevil spoon. What? Oh. Nice chunky one. Yeah. On that spoon, nice. Good job, bud. That's what happens when you just take it easy and you're not focused. Yeah. What I got, but it was right after Bren. Couple it was actually a 40 inch of mine for some reason. I don't know how, but it was. Yeah, this is just another like mid mid sized fish. It's not. Yeah. I'll land it though. Nice. Oh man, we're gonna. You know, well, anyway, there's like one cut there, there's a cut on that finger. We're getting all beat up. You know, you know it's a good day when your hands are all covered in cuts and uh, you need you feel like you've been beat up with a baseball bat at the end of the day. So many fish in Stephen Lake. It's it's just it's actually insane. They fight the hardest I've ever seen pike fight. Yeah, they they, in well, they fight pretty hard. But it's it's got a lot to do with the time of the year, the water temperature. They're the most active right now. 
it's not a big fish, but just tons and tons of these guys. Yeah. All day long. All right. This is another pretty quality pike on the same uh, whoa on the same uh, map cyclops spoon. I don't know. It's weird. Nice fat one. Yeah, it has it's it's quite a quite a Oh, you know, you just know like the second it hits. Sometimes the bigger walleye, like we've been getting three, four pound walleye here occasionally, mixed in with the pike. And they feel different. Like I think they're, when they open their mouths, they're almost like a drift sock. And I'm like, it's either a, one of those bigger walleye or a better pike. And it's a better pike. That's probably a 37, maybe. Oh, no, let's have a look. Those, those mid sizes, 36, 37 inches, they fight so hard. Oh, they sure do. They jump out of the water like, like a salmon. Oh, it's got me wet. Now that fish needs to... Needs to uh... oh, it's a not a bad one. It's a pretty nice one. Chunky little one. Chunky monkey. Alright. Another quality fish. We moved way further out to the other side. And uh, cast in the same spoon. And oh, it was just a solid head. I really want to get a look at this fish. I haven't even seen it yet. It was just a thunk. It just stopped dead. That happens a lot with a lot of these fish, that I think. That was wicked. That was really good. I think this is pretty nice, Bren. Oh, yeah, that's a nice one. That's a big one. Oh, oh, oh. that's oh, a tank. Oh, yeah, that's a... That's a tank. That's a 40. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're definitely going to cradle that one. That's a beauty. That's completely engulfed. Look at him go. This is wild. We haven't even fished this side of the flat yet. It's a little deeper here. It's like seven feet. With uh, not a lot of cabbage, but some cabbage. That was such a good hit. Brendan's really good at cradling. You gotta go. You got. You gotta go a little deeper than that, actually. Oh, mama! Oh, jeez! Big giant head on that guy. And, 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 close it up. Yep. Oh, good boy. Thanks, buddy. Yep. That was awesome. Woo! I'm laughing here now because <laughs> Brendan's like, this spot is, I don't like it, it's too deep, and blah, blah, blah. And uh, the last one I got was in seven feet of water. He wants to fish a little shallower. And he said, no, 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 Dad, that was a fluke. And then literally, the very next cast, <laughs> slam! Hey, don't judge me. So, it's not a fluke. I gotta have a look at this fish. Uh, oh, I thought all, that came off right there. He's just scything through all this cabbage down My there. My guess is... It's definitely not a hammer handle. Oh, that's a pretty nice one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a fluke! It is, I'm telling you. Listen to your dad. There's only big ones in these oh, new for cabbage for sure. I know. It's, it's not a number spot. Thank goodness for braid. There's just no way. Like, old school, back the way we used to fish with with mono. Not good. This braid just cuts through the, the weeds like a knife. Uh, oh, look at that. It's just a big, thick beast. You know what? Should we create it? <coughs> Here. Yeah. Oh, it's splashing me. <laughs> it's refreshing. It's an, it's an angling Irish spring commercial. Oh, he's a beast! <coughs> I'm going to turn his head and then lead him in. <laughs> Woo, doggy! Big, giant, muscular... Oh. 
deep, 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 deep. Oh, he's all twisted. You got him? Good job, buddy. Right on. Oh, that was a total fluke. <laughs> That's another pretty decent one. What was one. that, like five minutes later? Something like that. This is wild. What a day. Hey? Yeah. What an unbelievable day. All right, this is just unbelievable. I think that's a, I can't tell. That's a solid fish. That's a pretty good one, I would say. That's a very solid fish. Wow. Man, I can't they're believe this. in here and in This numbers. is one of the better days ever, I think, bar none. Bar done? Bar, bar down. Oh, Castigan Lake, Northern Manitoba with Elk Island Lodge, man. It's an absolute fish factory. Giant pike factory. <clears throat> We're definitely gonna cradle this one. I need definitely to cradle this. Start to. Whoa. I think I'll swing around to this side. You know, I fall a lot in this boat. We gotta actually organize the boat a little better for this. Oh man. Oh, this is wild. thing is just going wherever it wants. How big do you think that one is? Oh. Okay, let's see if we can do this now. Oh. He's not very docile, this one. That's for sure. Yes! Woohoo! <laughs> wow! Okay, we're at the bottom end of Little Stull Lake, where the cabin is at. It's uh, actually not Castigan, it's on Little Stull. And the Stull River flows in here. It's our third full day, so Wednesday, June 19th. Another beautiful, beautiful day. And uh, there's some rapids here with a pool. We're going to just motor up and uh, see if we can jig for some walleye to start our day off. Sound good? Yeah. What a beautiful spot. Holy cow. We're going to find out shortly, but I'm quite sure that this is just teeming with walleye. It's got to be. We're kind of just up against the rocks here because it's very difficult. Boat control is so difficult. And uh, catching fish and a little pike. Just moments ago, we saw a giant cinnamon colored black bear, eh, Brent? Yeah. It's cool, right on those rocks on the other side of the rapids. Little pike. Wrong species, but anyway, we're trying to jig for some walleye right now. This is a walleye. Right species. On this kind of pink and chartreuse colored Z-Man paddle tail. So this particular bait, I actually had this on at North Caribou a couple weeks ago and uh, it's I caught, I don't know, like 200 walleyes on that and just tied it on when I got here to, uh, to um, Castigan. Indestructible. Awesome stuff. You can cut down on, on your weight for plastics big time on these flying trips with the Z-Man stuff, the Elastec. Another Y. Nice average size too. It's funny because the, the fish in uh, the main body of Castigan are really pale and silvery colored and these ones down here are much more typical dark golden fish. Clearly there's a different population.
that's a really nice one. We're um, kind of just at the entrance to this little creek. It goes way up in there for a long way, but we're out in the entrance in about five, six feet of water with cabbage, and there's a bunch of dead cane there. And Brendan, I'm pretty sure, just about had a heart attack. <laughs> He's throwing this big red and white spinnerbait, and it uh, right beside the boat, eh, bud? Yeah. Like savage. Savage. That's probably a low 40 fish. That's a nice one. <clears throat> It's a lot bigger than you think. And I told you, I said this hundred and fifty percent this is a spot where we're gonna get some nicer fish. I was sitting down and I was kinda of like not really thinking. No, out. it's so hot today. Brendan just like he was dizzy, some gas was leaking out of the can in the front of the boat, so he wasn't feeling good, he was feeling kinda of nauseous. So we cleaned the boat up and then we went over to a flat rock, he jumped in for a swim. And uh, he's feeling better. This is like almost like the first time he's fished in the last hour because just because. And then I'm gonna, I'll land it for you. <laughs> Brennan's really good with a bait caster, all things considered. Here, learned pretty quick. Learned pretty quickly. Beastly fish. It's got a big head. It's not super long, but big. Big head on it. You got a like cooperative pike. Oh, oh that's, pretty that's good a nice one. one, bud. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> All right. Okay, this is still Wednesday. It's uh, our third full day. We actually went in this afternoon for three hours just to. Yeah. It was so hot for a little break. I had like a 42 fall on my spinner yeah. bait. It didn't hit though. And then we drifted over a spot. Yeah, we, we and got, then, well, it's been kind of slow, but I haven't really got a good look at this fish, but it feels super heavy. Oh, uh, oh it's a pretty nice one. I can't tell. Is that a cradle fish or what? I'll grab it. All right. Oh, big, big hatchet. My spoon is gone. It disappeared. Brendan's legs were shaking a minute ago there. He had uh, twice big fish. I don't know if it was the same one. It's actually a pretty nice one. Yeah. Right up beside the boat, right? Yep. Is that a cradle fish? You know, it really could be. Yeah, I'm going to grab it. He just engulfed that thing. Holy smokes. On the same Cyclops spoon. Right, uh, we're in the middle of this big, broad area, but right behind us is like a hump that comes up to two, three feet with rock. And we're kind of right on the edge of it. It's behind us and casting out into the deeper water. And uh, uh, There's a 50% chance you're about to get stung by a bee. That's okay, I don't care. There's a bee that I want to kill. It's very close to my leg. It's actually not hooked that good. But I got oh it. my gosh. Barely got it. This is going to be a flopper when oh. we're taking photos. Oh, oh, that could have been really bad. Not bad. <laughs> cool. Yep. Oh, yeah, the doctor. Hammered gold and silver doctor. He's got a pretty nice one on just after we got the last one there. Whoa. Oh, he porpoised out of the water. Come on over here, buddy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he's unnecessary. To do, oh yeah, the fish. Okay. I'm, I'm literally soaked. That's a feisty one. They're feisty. I should probably just tighten the drag and just get this fish. Oh. 
That's the best grab, but... Hey, sometimes you gotta do it backwards. Yep. Got him. Alright, Thursday, June 20th, our fourth full day. Once again, we're on the, the main shore of Castigan Lake in these big sandy bays. And, uh... We just got here. We, we got out actually kind of early today, like mm -hmm. 7.30. That's super early for us. And uh, we've caught a couple dozen smaller pike so far. And a really nice, uh, that's a nice pike actually, Bren. Look at it. I can't see it because the glare of the sun. Can't you see it without your sunglasses on? No. That's a beast. That's a beastly pike. <laughs> that's a cradle fish. I'm not going to land that one by hand. Whoa. Awesome. It's the first drift of the day through the spot. We, we just got here. Literally just got here. Pretty good start, I would say. Yeah. That was weird, but we did. I, I, was, I wasn't even looking. I had my eyes closed. Because <coughs> the water We got it. Head. That was like the weirdest cradle job ever. It went in and turned around in the cradle and went in backwards. I called. I nice. Yeah. Brendan and I actually have the anchor out because we have motor issues. We've got these uh -huh. logs in the boat to use as push poles. We're probably going to start paddling back to camp shortly. But we're catching fish, literally one after another. That's a pretty chunky one. I think I should probably grab that one, Bren. <laughs> this is crazy. It's another story for the rocking chair. Seems like something always happens. Oh! totally coming off. It's not very well hooked, yeah. Oh, oh, we got it. Ooh, decent. Yeah. Nice one, bud. Yeah. Pretty decent one. We just released Brendan's fish. Next cast. Yeah, the very next cast. Boy, I tell you, if you have to be dead in the water with your anchor out, it's a pretty good spot. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. Oh, there's another one following it. Is it bigger? Yeah, that's a nice one, Bren. You want me to... I... Another kind of mid-sized. You want me to throw my spoon at it or no? No. Uh oh. It's not worth it. That one's only like 34 or something like uh -oh. that. Oh. This is crazy. We'll remember this for a long time. Yeah. Some mosquitoes around us. We'll just stay here all day. Yeah, I'll be fine with that. With the <laughs> other guys find us whenever. Yeah, I don't think they're coming up to this end of the lake though. That's the problem. We got two other guys in our party. We're not fishing. They they went in the opposite direction this morning. And if they did come and look for us, it won't be till like you know 10, 30, 11 o'clock tonight. Probably a uh, decent fish. Yeah. Dead in the water, same spot, fish after fish. Um, Unbelievable. Another big, thick, fat one. Oh my god. Nice one. That is. It's crazy. This yep. is absolutely crazy. It sucks. But whatever. That's right. But you're, we only have one paddle, so Brendan is uh, just enjoying the ride in the back. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, when you go on these outpost trips, sometimes Brendan's <laughs> laughing as he's filming. Sometimes stuff happens, and you either deal with it, or you curl up under a bush and cry. 
and we're the former. So, um, just so everyone realizes, Plano trays are not just for uh, fishing lures anymore. We're, oh. Necessity is the mother of invention, right Brent? Yeah. We made a paddle. There's only one paddle in this boat. And we're trying to paddle back to camp. So I've got it tied to this tree. <laughs> it's actually working pretty good. We're laughing about it now. I'm going to be crying later when I'm cramping up in my bed. Nah, it'll be funny. Well, my son is a chip off the old block. I've been paddling this giant tree with a Plano box attached to it for, well, quite some time now. And I'm pretty tired, so Bren's... It's all kind of rocky, slippery boulders. Yeah, he's he's pulling us along. We still got a ways to go, but we'll make it. Well, it's been what, Bren? Twelve straight hours now? I'm not sure. The cabin is actually straight ahead. You can you probably can't see it through those two little rock piles. The sun is sinking low on the horizon. My giant tree paddle, crafted with a Plano tray, has served me well on this ordeal. <laughs> Thank you, Plano. The end is in sight. It's like a horse that sees the finish line. It's been a long day of paddling. Twelve hours. Pretty tired. Okay, it's Friday. I think it's June 21st. We uh, we had a tough day yesterday, right, bud? Yeah. We had motor issues and we paddled for most of the day. But we did get five in excess of 40 inches yesterday. So, got the motor issues figured out. Back to the same spot. We're, we're on our first drift right now. We've caught about, I don't know, a dozen little hammer handles already. And uh, I got a big one on. This lake is just unreal, honest to God. This could be a cradle fish, actually, Brent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna remove all these rods out of it. We're getting a lot of fish on this cyclops spoon. Look at it. Look. That's a big one. Yeah. Is it? Oh, yeah. That's a big, fat, thick one. Oh, please don't wander the boat right now. You gotta come back this way, bud. <laughs> oh, baby. Just slammed it. Beastly big pike. Good job. Wow. That was an epic fight. Yeah. Woo! All right, it's Saturday, our second last day of the trip. And for the first day ever, we actually have cloud cover and there's a nice light breeze. It's absolutely fantastic. So we're in this big bay. That's that's the entrance to the bay right there. There's a narrow neck down and then it, it opens up into this big broad area. And we're on our favorite cabbage flat. We're on our favorite favorite flat. <clears throat> Five to seven feet of cabbage up there, and we're coming up onto it. Comes slowly up to like three, four feet. So anyway, we have uh, two. We've been getting fish on doctor spoons, like the usual stuff, but these MEP Cyclops spoons have been particularly deadly. I have two of them. 
So originally I was using a Fire Tiger Cyclops spoon, number three to be specific, number three MEP Cyclops, and uh, Bren made me give it to him. So I gave it to him, and I I took my other uh, for most of the week. I've been using this blue, blue and silver MEP Cyclops, and it's been hammering fish. And about 15 minutes ago, he's like, "I want that lure, Dad." I think you're just on cabbage there, bud. So anyway, he's got finally got my blue and silver cyclops on. Oh, he, oh, that is unreal. That fish is covered in muck. We can't see it. It's like he buried his nose in the mud. I've never seen that before. But anyway, that was really funny. Brendan put my uh, my lure on. He finally got it off of me. And five minutes later, boom, this big one. All right. It's gonna take off. It's being kind of nice. Docile. Right now. We always like cooperative pike. Until. Oh. Yeah. We got it. Yeah. Just bump. Same right. spot where Bren just got his. And there's a spot here. There's a shelf where it's like two, three feet. And it comes up, it's really cabbagey. And uh, we start out in six, seven, and as we approach like that, you know, three, four foot area, it seems like that's where the bigger fish are hanging out. So we pretty much run 30 pound, 30 pound uh, braid. I like Power Pro, but many of them are probably pretty good on the spinning reels, and um, 40 on the bait casters. Probably just gonna grab this guy. Oh, Whew, decent fish. Yeah, it's a nice one. Right on. New penny color. It's kind of like a reddy, orangey white on the front, and just copper on the back. Three quarter ounce. For whatever reason, they seem to be hitting smaller spoons on this trip, right, Brad? Mm hmm. It's weird, yeah. So we're kind of scaling everything down a little bit. All right, very good. Okay, it's still Saturday. Same spot. Brendan just uh, had a had a horrible moment there. The, one of the two Map Cyclops spoons, the one that I gave him, uh, he, he he lost it. His line broke. There must have been a nick in the line. So, anyhow. The orange and copper doctor spoon. When in doubt, always go back to the orange and copper doctor. Or as Brendan likes to call it, the Brendan. Yeah. He calls it the Brendan because he uses it all the time. And third cast with the orange and copper doctor spoon. Pretty decent pike. This is not a spot for numbers. Um, some of the other spots we fished on this lake it's probably a 41. were... Uh, like every cast, double header, double header, like uh, weeding through an army of smaller ones. Yeah, you know what? We'll cradle it. This spot here, you don't get as many, but uh, there, there's more quality fish in this spot. Um, you definitely got to try and get it onto this side of the boat where there's no rods. And come back here. One. Good job. We got it. Yep. Come over here. Yes. <laughs> oh, baby. It just came rushing. I was adjusting the boat. I wanted to get us a little closer. So the boat was actually in gear going backwards. And I flipped this lure out. I saw the thing hit it and this big flash and uh, knew it was a good one. These things kind of scare me, I'm not going to lie, these spoons. I lost like a 50 on it before. Yeah, they get, they get unbuttoned. Uh, just to be safe, we'll get the cradle on that beast. That 
little three quarter ounce Johnson silver minnow, new penny. All right, good job, Bill. We're getting really good. <clears throat> We're like a well oiled machine now after a week of this, right? I know. We just landed mine. Just sitting now. And Bren, uh, I'm just sitting taking a break and we're drifting up onto this flat. We're in four feet right now. And uh, surprise, surprise. Another fish on the orange and copper doctor spoon. There's so many pike on this flat. It's ridiculous. Yeah, they're quality. They're all quality pike. <laughs> this one's one of the harder ones to grab for some reason. Because it's just one of those sporadic ones. But... <laughs> oh, I got it. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> Brendan's not letting me fish. Every time you readjust the boat for a fresh drift, I don't think it is either. Anyway, he's like, get the camera, Dad. On the, another one on the orange and copper, Doctor. Actually, that's a pretty nice one, you little bugger. Yeah. <laughs> I swear to God, the last three drifts, I haven't been able to... And then by the time we unhook the fish and deal with it and take a quick picture, motor back up, we're through the spot already. So I gotta just mark this right in front of the beaver lodge. And basically that rock right there. Another nice one. This is crazy. <clears throat> this is the most epic day ever. It's shaping up to be. I'm, uh, I have my phone with me because I have my inReach device. And uh, I'm marking down the numbers on the phone and, and so far they're crazy. Yeah, what an unbelievable day. What is it, like maybe like 2.30? Yeah, something like that. But this is literally the first overcast day. It's been blistering hot sun every single day of the trip so far. And uh, nice, just a perfect breeze for a drift. They were just the right direction too. Everything about this day is perfect. <clears throat> I knew it was a big one after the head shakes. The head shakes were just giant. The orange and copper doctor seems to be working is clearly. in the house. It's just so like big and slow and just like a tank. This is just wild. The Stegan Lake, Northern Manitoba, just Better. unbelievable. Yeah. I would say so far for you, for sure. We, you've had some pretty good trips with me. I think this one's the best. Um. Is a big bike. I would, oh, probably, yeah, but one of the better ones for sure. Oh, I think it's not even close. Sort of cooperative. Oh, in the got it. Oh, oh, oh man. yeah. Another nice one, baby. The doctor is in. Doctor Spoon Pike again. Next drift up. It's like every single drift. We're getting beat up by big pike. It's insane. Lake is pretty good. Yeah, Castigan Lake. I don't know if the camera caught that. Brent's like, Castigan Lake is a pretty good lake. There's one little area here in this flat where they're just stuck. It's crazy. We have a perfect, perfect drift, too. You're just like not even like trying. Oh, that's dangerous. Gotta switch hands. Okay, I got it. Oh. Oh. You that's know what? Bike. That's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one. Same spot, a little later in the day. We just had a little brief rain shower pass through for the first time ever. And it's an okay one. And, uh, a micro burst of wind. Went back up a little further than we have been before. 
and uh, man, this thing just slammed it. Um, <laughs> on that copper and orange doctor, both of our doctors are getting pretty beat up and raggedy looking. You stole my spoon. Oh, color. I've never used that color before, Brendan. Thanks for telling me about yeah. it. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have caught that fish. Wow. <laughs> They're powerful. This has been, we've had, we've caught big fish every day of the trip. Uh, two of the days in particular have been epic, and this has been the best day so far. It's actually been Brendan's day for the most part, but we've both been doing pretty good. I'm getting showered over here. Here. Tag team. They're my fish now, I caught it. <laughs> Oh yeah, he is barely hooked. Oh. Smaller head on that guy. Oh. Another pretty nice bike. Yeah. Look at how beat up that doctor is. I know. This is a sideways fish, so yeah. it's... Right at the end of the day, it just... It just... I uh, missed it first. It just exploded on the surface. Moved a bathtub full of water. And, uh... Yeah, it's a nice one. <clears throat> this is on the... It's on another doctor spoon, but it's a hammered gold and silver, like their premium series. Pretty nice one. <laughs> just before, this is funny, just before this fish, I'm like, I'm going to try something different. I got a box full of spinner baits, which I love throwing, especially, you know, above deep cabbage. But we've been getting so many on spoons, I haven't bothered. And uh, picked out this beautiful... $25 spinner bait, put it on, first cast, I got like a backlash on my reel that the reel stopped and my, it, it, any angler fishes a lot, I'm sure it's happened, my lure, uh, my braid broke and just, uh, it snapped and flew like a thousand miles and I lost one. Okay, back to the doctor. So many cut up weeds on your If you line. believe in a higher power, that's the only reason probably I caught this fish right now. It's like, no, Mike. Back, go back to the doctor. We're getting to towards the end of our rope, which has been such a such a long day, but we don't want to give up. Wasn't the greatest of angles there. So, I know where it's hurting my. Okay, this is. I, I got no room because you're right at my feet, Bren. I, I can't lead it into the cradle. My rods are. We got her. Slid right in. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Come here, you. Good job. Oh. <laughs> Unbelievable. What a day. This may be the best day of big pike fishing I've ever had in my life. It's just incredible. Oh, I don't think that, but it's been really... I mean, it's been epic. Just unreal. All day long. We haven't... Switched spot? No. Incredible. Oh, he's not hooked real good either. Uh, cradle fish. Yeah, I think we'll... Probably put that in the cradle, yeah. Uh, on the hammered <coughs> uh, gold and silver, I'm get, I got it anytime you want it. Yeah, right now. The hammered gold and silver doctor. Okay, okay. <laughs> Just well, relax. Want, it's, it's not like you haven't caught 20 giants already right. today. Uh, Brennan was all triggered a minute ago because he actually had a crazy thing happen. He was uh, jiggling his lure beside the boat, trying to get weeds off it, and a massive fish just slammed it. It's barely hooked. Like, yeah, I know. Come on, yes. Oh, we got it, we got it. Yes. We got it. Yes. I think that's bigger than 40. That's a big one. Yeah. Okay. First drift. This thing just stopped dead. And I saw it flash sideways in the water, man moved a bunch of water. I think it's, I haven't got a real good look at it. Just where the head shakes, I can tell it's I big. think it's a pretty good one. Big head on it. Look how big it is. <clears throat> the heads on these things are just unreal. Big. 
Now are you awake? No. <laughs> these these rods that we're using, we got a couple incarnations of them, different colors, but they're, they're all basically the same rod. This is a the Saint Croix Avid um, inshore saltwater spinning rod. I love these rods for pike, like when I'm using lighter baits like Doctor Spoons. They're fantastic rods. Tons of backbone. They're bulletproof. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna lead them in as soon as you're ready. So. Oh. Okay, that's not gonna be good. You might you might hold this please. Hold my rod. I'm probably gonna lose this fish now. Almost certainly. You might have to let go of the cradle if it takes off, okay? Brent? Yeah. He's gonna shake right off. That is how not to land a big pike. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I just got one. Brendan just got one. They're on fire again this morning. And like, I was sitting down <laughs> to try to take a break. I like half heartedly casted out the spoon and another quality fish. Holy cow. Oh! This is crazy. They are liking that orange and copper doctor spoon. I talk about it all the time and, you know, but it works. That's why. It's crazy. This one's a little better hooked. one. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Still on our last day on Sunday, every single drift, we're hooking big pike. And Bren's got a another big fat one. On, you guessed it, the orange and copper doctor spoon. He immediately switched over when I started slamming big pike on. I had on. I oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh man, and <clears throat> that rod, and it, actually for whatever it's worth, is quite a light rod. It's an extra fast action, but Dude, it's, I think it's rated for like, what is it, 8 to 14 or something like that? Um, it's, uh, let's see, um, 8 to 14, yeah. It's a little bit light for what we're doing, but it's a lot of fun, holy cow. This this day is shaping up to be just as good as yesterday, Brad. I know. This is insane. I literally cannot believe Castigan Lake. In particular, this spot, the last couple days, has just been absolutely insane. Oh, that is a nice big thick one. I need to lead him in. Yep. Swim around. That could have been twice that happened, I was going to say. Yeah. It's kind of being nice. We got it. Nice and easy. That's how you do it. Yep. That's how it's done. Here, buddy. Brent got his big one. I got another big one on the same drift. And right away, Brendan got another one. It's just amazing action. Just unbelievable. Yeah, there's no way that one is. It's a nice one, though. Okay, I'm it. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Come here, you. It's gonna be a hard one to grab. There we go. I got it. Yeah, it's a pretty nice thick one. Yeah. 
beauty. It's the end of our trip, and I just want to talk about a few little things that I used for the first time on this trip that actually worked phenomenally well. So, first one, and I'm absolutely thrilled with this, the magnetic transducer mount, which I've never used before. So this is from, I believe it's transducermounts.com. This goes to the outside of the boat, and then, bam, on the inside of the boat. So the second thing, and this kind of goes hand in hand with the fish finder, first time ever I've used these lithium uh, batteries. So it's the exact same footprint as the, the lead acid 12 volt batteries that I've been using for years. And this is a completely unscientific uh, observation. It's not like I'm figuring out all the different specs and everything. The only thing I can tell you is this battery here lasted for a good day and a half. Um, I brought it in every day to, to charge, but the, the first day, it's actually almost two full days. And this particular unit here, this is a Humminbird Helix, and it's got its color, it's got a big screen, it's got GPS, it sucks up a lot of juice, way more juice than the, the usual portable fish finder that I bring. And this lithium battery lasted twice as long as the normal lead acid battery that I use. They're one-fifth the weight of the lead acid battery. So for fly-in trips, it's a massive weight savings. The other thing that I've used for the first time ever on a trip is, um, and again, this is something that's not a tip for a lot of you guys out there, but a pool noodle. I shoved it into my duffel bag and uh, Brendan has a big chunk up at his end of the boat. They snap onto the side and they're perfect for hanging lures. So other trips I've used like bungee cords from thwart to thwart or a piece of rope or even sometimes two-way tape with, um, with foam on it. This is, fl this is better. It's, it's fantastic. When you're, when you're running, if you don't have this extension on here, you're kind of wrenched and around and it's kind of awkward and if you want to stand up and you know look for cabbage or rocks or whatever you can't do that if you don't have this extension so from past experience I knew what I needed this is a one and a half inch PVC pipe I have two hose clamps on the end it, it hammers on just nice right over the, uh, the twist grip and it's solid, it's it's like rock solid. And I put Gorilla Tape on, actually it looks cool. I had a camo colored uh, tiller extension. But this is one of the best things ever. I, I was super happy with this. So that's another thing I'm gonna be doing. So, just to recap, the 12 volt, 10 amp hour Dakota lithium batteries, There's the magnetic transducer mount, the pool noodles, and a one and a half inch chunk of PVC pipe for the tiller extension. Great tips for a flying trip. So this camp is without a doubt what I would consider a fisherman's camp. This is not a five star camp. Um, it's a little rough around the edges, but you know what? Um, the, the, we're at the end of our week waiting for the plane right now, and our total for pike in excess of 40 inches was 52. So. I think there's a lot of people that might put up with a little bit of um, lesser amenities for, qual for a quality of fishing like that. This was probably the best trophy pike fishing that I've ever had in my life. Hello there, this is Tom Pastor. I'm a non-pro pike fisherman. We are here to let everybody know about a new type of fishing lure out there that was proven in the headwaters of the Monongahela River for carp and catfish. But Jay and I are up here in northern Manitoba to see if the surgeon lure that you see here, now we've got a small specimen pike that got it, but it'll catch any size fish. We just caught a 44 incher with it just moments ago. Invented by a midget from Quebec. Bad not, Bren, just grab the rope and, and just grab the rope and just grab the rope and swim back. We didn't tie a very good uh, knot. I didn't. <laughs> this is perfect, actually. Brendan got clean right at the end of our day. <laughs> All right, good job, buddy. 
At least it didn't go far. It wasn't a windy day.